Welcome to Philosophy. In this short video, I'll be talking about what philosophy is, philosophy major requirements, and career options for philosophy majors. There isn't really a consensus about how to define philosophy, but here's a stab at it. Philosophy is the systematic and rational study of fundamental questions and answers about existence, values, and knowledge. Classic philosophical questions include, what is a good life? Is it possible to know anything? And do human beings have freedom of the will? To answer these questions, we will look at the works of ancient philosophers like Plato and Aristotle, all the way to philosophers of today. Philosophy has four major areas, value theory or ethics, metaphysics, epistemology or theory of knowledge, and logic. Now I'll talk about each of these in more detail. Value theory, or ethics, also known as moral philosophy, addresses questions about what is morally right. Would it be right to kill one innocent person to save 100? Generally, are actions right because of their beneficial consequences, or for some other reason? Lies sometimes have beneficial consequences, but some people think that lying is always wrong anyway. One thing about lying is that it works only if, if it is the exception to the rule. People believe lies only because most people tell the truth most of the time. Some philosophers think this, what if everyone acted that way, is the key to morality. In ethics, we consider the moral theories of many great philosophers, including Plato, Aristotle, David Hume, Immanuel Kant, and philosophers of today. Value theory also includes aesthetics, which deals with questions like, what is beauty? Is beauty truly in the eye of the beholder? Metaphysics is about the ultimate nature of things. What is the nature of time? Does it flow or is it a fourth dimension? Are the future and past just as real as the present? Consider questions about people. Are we merely physical objects, or do we have a non-physical aspect, like a mind that isn't the brain, or a soul? Do people have freedom of the will, of the sort that makes them responsible for their behavior, in the way that an evaporating puddle is not morally responsible for its behavior? What is freedom of the will? Is there reason to believe God exists? Is the appearance of design we find in nature evidence for the existence of God? Is the suffering of innocent people evidence against the existence of God? Do physical objects or colors, sounds, and tastes exist when unobserved? Metaphysics tries to answer questions like these. Epistemology is another name for theory of knowledge. The central questions of epistemology are, what is knowledge? How is it different from mere belief or opinion? And can we know anything? That might seem like an odd question. Of course, we know many things. You know your name, who is president, how many toes you have. But we have very high standards for knowledge. If you have a lottery ticket and it is one of a million tickets and the winner will be drawn tonight, what if I tear up your ticket saying that I knew your ticket will lose? You'd probably object. Since you can't rule out the possibility that it will win, it has one chance in a million of winning, we don't know that it will lose. So, is there one chance in a million you could be wrong about the things you think you know? Is it possible that you've been deceived or are subject to an illusion? For instance, how do you know you aren't dreaming right now? Most epistemologists do think we know many things. The trick is to explain how this could be while respecting the very high standards we have for knowledge. Logic is about the rules of reasoning. Deductive rules of logic are those rules that will never lead you from true statements to false ones. For example, let P and Q stand for complete statements. From P and if P then Q, you can deduce Q. This rule is known as modus ponens, and it's one of the simplest and most common rules in logic. 
Logic also reveals the meaning of connectives like and, or, and if then. For instance, in what conditions is if P then Q true? How does if P then Q differ from P if Q or P if and only if Q? Our Introduction to Symbolic Logic course, Philosophy 1500, meets ECU's math requirement. Some majors have complicated requirements. Philosophy doesn't. The only requirements are 30 semester hours, or 10 courses, with at least 12 of those hours at the 3,000 or 4,000 level. There are no required courses or sequences. All philosophy courses count towards the major. All bachelor's degrees must meet the same general education requirements. Bachelor of Arts degrees, like philosophy, also require four semesters of a foreign language and completion of a minor field of study. Here's a sample four-year plan for majoring in philosophy, but this is very flexible. The idea here is to get started with some introductory philosophy courses and make progress on your foreign language and general education in the first few semesters, and then get to upper level courses in the major and minor courses in later semesters. And you have a lot of freedom about exactly how you do that. The philosophy minor requirements are also very simple. 18 semester hours of philosophy courses with at least six of those hours at the 3000 or 4000 level. Many students double and triple major at ECU. I've even had a couple of students with four majors. Most students have plenty of time for a second major and having expertise in more than one discipline is a big advantage on the job market and in applying to grad school. If you double major, you do not also need a minor. Note, if your first major is a BS degree, such as biology, chemistry, math, computer science, criminal justice, and you have a second major in philosophy, you are not required to have the four semesters of a foreign language. Philosophy majors pair philosophy with lots of other majors, most commonly political science, psychology, history, biology, criminal justice, and English. Philosophy is not a job prep major in that it doesn't prepare students for any one particular job. Instead, it instills the skills, communication, problem solving, analytical skills, and argumentation, which is the ability to rationally persuade someone to believe or do something, that are necessary for any good job you'll ever have and which will never be obsolete. Most students don't wind up in the profession they planned on or they find themselves in several different careers in their lifetime. They need skills that are transferable from one career to another, and that's what philosophy gives them. Also, all good jobs involve moral dilemmas for which it is vital to have the ethical grounding that philosophy supplies. So what careers do philosophy majors have? The most common is law, more on that in a moment. Many become journalists, professors, doctors or nurses, entrepreneurs, game designers, and investigative analysts. Many philosophy majors go to law school and become attorneys. Philosophy and the legal profession are both all about argumentation. Law school isn't just learning what the laws are. It is a multidisciplinary philosophy, history, political science, sociology, approach to the law. Evidence that philosophy is a superb preparation for law school is that philosophy majors do the best on the law school admissions test, the LSAT, and are accepted into law school at the highest rates. Look it up, best majors for pre-law, and you will find philosophy at or near the top of the list. For those majoring in philosophy thinking about law school, ask about our optional interdisciplinary pre-law concentration. It involves logic, ethics, philosophy of law, as well as courses from disciplines like political science, history, sociology, and classics. Philosophy is a great preparation for other professional or graduate schooling. 
philosophy majors have the highest scores on the GMAT, the business school admissions test, higher than business majors. They have the highest scores on the GRE. They even have higher scores on the MCAT, the medical school admissions test, than biology majors do. Seriously, if you want to go to med school, double major in philosophy and something like biology, chemistry, or physics. Philosophy majors' mid-career earnings are also at the top of the list for non-STEM majors. Let us know if you have any questions or if we can help in any way. I'm John Collins. I'm the Majors Advisor in Philosophy. Feel free to email me at collinsjo at ecu.edu. Also pictured is the chair of the Department of Philosophy and Religious Studies, George Bailey. You can reach him at baileyg at ecu.edu. I hope this short video has been helpful. We hope to see you in the fall, either as a philosophy major or at least taking a philosophy class.